Welcome. If you ever wonder what's the importance of ideas molding realities, this interview is for you. If you ever wonder what is good, what is wrong, if there's a God, what's the purpose of ideas, what's philosophy, I think that you will find this interview really interesting. We're with Harry Bingswanger from the Ayn Rand Institute. Harry, thank you very much for being here with us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I, I like discuss, uh, discussing with you because we, we want to engage the audience in the importance of philosophy. We live in a day and age where people don't value ideas anymore and some people don't connect the importance of ideas with what the reality brings to us. So what is philosophy, Harry? Philosophy is first of all a science in the sense of an organized body of knowledge, not like the natural sciences, but it's a discipline, a science that studies the fundamentals of man, existence, and man's relationship to existence. So it discusses the biggest of the big ideas that there are. If you find a big idea, if it's big enough, it's philosophy. Right, but why, why do I need it? Because in this day and age, some people think, why would I be asking like, you know, the big questions of the universe, is there a purpose when there's a life to be lived, right? And, and it's immediacy. So why, why do well, we need philosophy? Well, do you think you should live it? Why do you think it, it's immediate? Why do you think you should live it? That's a philosophic idea. Right. Some people think that this life is just a testing ground for another life to come right? Mm -hmm. And so they don't think the purpose of life is to live it. It's a very small minority of people in the history of mankind that have thought your life is yours to live. Mm -hmm. I think that. Ayn Rand thinks that. But it's, most people have thought this is a test, a punishment. This life is a veil of tears that tests whether you're worthy of entering heaven or going to go to hell. Right. So that's a philosophical idea. And the question, uh, why do I need philosophy, is itself a philosophic question. So if somebody asks that, why do I need philosophy? I don't really need philosophy. That's a philosophic idea right there. Right. But the, to answer you more directly, um, everything you do is based upon the conclusions you've reached, mm -hmm. right? So you want something. Why do you want it? You didn't want it when you emerged from the womb. You weren't born desiring a career in software development or something. Whatever it is you want came from learning, came from understanding what's available in the world. That's ideas. So your desires come from your values, from your appraisal of things in the world that you understand, that you know about. And the, that's an idea. So everything you do is based upon a belief and a desire, both of which come from the conclusions of your mind. Now, the other thing you need to add is that some ideas rest on other ideas, mm -hmm. right? So like chemistry depends on physics. Physics depends upon basic physics. Mm -hmm. Well, everything depends upon the biggest ideas that there are, like is the world really there? I mean, how are you going to live if you don't believe the world is really there? So even if you think that you don't have a philosophical basis, that is also a philosophical answer. Everyone, ha yes. Everyone has a philosophy. Everyone has a philosophy. The only way you can avoid having a philosophy is to be under two years of age right. when you haven't had enough experience and, and understanding of words to form conclusions. But right. everybody generalizes from their experience. Most people go along with what other people tell them, but what other people tell them is, comes down to a philosophy like my mother used to tell me, life is with people, Harry. Life is, don't think only of yourself, life is with people. Right. And I knew she was wrong even then. But that's a philosophic idea. What, it, what are you living for? What's the purpose of your life? What are your obligations to other people? Okay, but if you cannot escape philosophy, even if you try to avoid it, that's a philosophical branch of, yeah. of philosophy. 
Why is it relevant to my life? Like, if I can understand Because you it, could be wrong. Everybody has different philosophies. I, I have a programmer I hired in the Philippines. Let's mm -hmm. call him Ken. He uh, recently lost a job opportunity at the last minute, and when he went back to his parents' home, they say, you can't stay here anymore. Right. Why? Why can't I stay here? I'm living here. With, uh, why can't I come in? You bring bad luck. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the philosophy that rules the Philippines, right? And this guy's a programmer, and he believes in ghosts. Right. So it's people tend to think their own philosophical conclusions are inevitable and non-controversial, and everybody knows that there are no ghosts. Everybody knows that you, the luck is not really transferable, and it's just random. It's not, it's not a force of nature. No, very few people know that. You have concluded that in your little subculture. Right. But everybody has a philosophy, and they're all different, so most of them have to be wrong, because if, if they're two contradictory ideas, at least one of them is wrong. Right. So you don't want to live on the basis of the wrong philosophy. So I want to test our audience, Harry, uh, on the different philosophies that they might be following without even knowing it. Because most people don't relate philosophy with superstition, with the religion's be beliefs. They think that that is a different category. And in this book, Philosophy, Who Needs It? Uh, Ran has a paragraph that is quite compelling uh, where we can summarize the different worldviews that our audience might be following and they don't even know it. So she has a paragraph that says, I never think in such abstract terms. I want to deal with concrete, particular, real life problems, which is what most people think, right? But you might claim, as, mo as most people do, that you have never been influenced by philosophy. I will ask you to check that claim. Have you ever thought or said the following? Don't be so sure. Nobody can be certain of anything. Uh, well, we got this notion from David Hume. Or, this may be good in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. You got that from Plato. Or, that was a rotten thing to do, but it's only human. Nobody is perfect in this world. You got that from Augustine. Or, it may be true for you, but it's not true for the rest. In, in this day and age where we see this victimhood uh, mentality, you know, it, it's true for them, but not for, for us. I couldn't help it. Nobody can help anything he does. You got that from Hegel. Or I can't prove it, but I feel that it's true. Mm -hmm. And you got that from Kant. And so on and so forth. We have all these premises that people follow without even knowing it. Now, with that in mind, can't people just get along without a philosophy and, you know, just be practical without yeah, well, questioning all of these premises? She has a great, since you're quoting Ayn Rand, she mm -hmm. has a great example of that. It's like a person who's driving from New York to California and says, we don't need a map. Why don't we just be practical and go to California the way that you go to California? Why use a map? It's so abstract. Right. Philosophy is your map of the universe and of yourself and of what you can achieve in the universe. So you, you can't be practical if you don't know what the hell you're doing. And most people will tell you, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm here doing this. I don't know why I'm in this career. My parents sort of nudged me into this. Mm -hmm. I was expected to do this, so I did it. Most people don't know why they're doing what they're doing. You can't. To be practical means to be effective in achieving a goal. Where does that goal come from? It right. comes from philosophy, your philosophy. Whether you accept, uh, define your own philosophy or accept the philosophies in your subculture. It, it's not imprinted in your brain. It's something that you reached as a conclusion either by your own thinking or by parasitizing the thinking of other people. And in that process precisely, what are the range of questions philosophy asks and answers? Well, let me give you some examples, and this could lead into the different branches of philosophy, because right. it's not just one big bag. But the basic questions are, what is the nature of reality? Is it real? 
Are there two realities? Or many realities? Or zero realities? Or is there one reality? And is that reality lawful, intelligible, causal, scientifically explainable? Or is it a random chaos where stuff just happens? Or is it maybe under the control of some cosmic consciousness that makes what happens happen so that you have to figure out what that cosmic being wants if you want to succeed and be practical. That's the metaphysics. That's the basic branch of philosophy, metaphysics. Okay, but before we get to that, mm -hmm. if you have all these philosophies available, from Plato to Aristotle to Hegel, until we get to Ayn Rand, for most of the people, all the philosophies have the same value. You know, they can be all wrong or all right. There's no like hierarchy, right? For, for, for most people, it's like, well, you know, philosophy is this uh, sector where you have all these thinkers and you have Plato who says this, you have Aristotle who oh, says I that, see. Hegel says this. And for most people, it's like, okay, in that group of thinkers, everything they say is valid because they have all questioned it's reality. It's like a cafeteria and you pick what exactly, you want. Exactly, like yeah. a big buffet, yeah. you know? But and some, some have gone for the salad of nihilism, <laughs> others have gone for the beef of realism, mm -hmm. others go for, you know, uh, the, the platonic views that there are other realities. Yeah. But, but for most people, they're all valid. You know, there's no hierarchy yeah, into well, saying one... this philosophy is more valid than the other. Of course, that is a philosophy that in itself is a philosophic view that there can be multiple truths and it's right. one that is demonstrably false. But you can see it in history. If you look, just look at the, the various historical eras where the different views held, mm -hmm. like Plato leading to Augustine, mm -hmm. the two worlds metaphysics leads to the dark ages, right. leads to the loss of knowledge, leads to the uh, population living in misery ruled over by a few who live in semi-misery, you know, the kings and the aristocrats, and 99.9% .9 are scraping the soil or the rice paddies to eke out a living where their life expectancy is 35. Right. And that's what happens when you live by the otherworldly, you know, the real reality is it's elsewhere. This world is governed by God and so forth. And then you go to the Renaissance when people rediscovered reason, uh -huh. you know, and culminates in the 19th century. And you see what life has become when science and technology use reason to understand a natural world. Right. So it, apparently it's a choice between a short lifespan in misery and ignorance right. versus what we have today. That's the difference of philosophy. Okay, so bad ideas lead to terrible realities. Yeah. Good ideas lead to more prosperous realities. Right. I get that. But the thing in philosophy is that then you don't have only one map to get back to your example from New York to yeah, California. You have, to find the you right have map. several maps. That's exactly right? it. And, and, and how do you give uh, people the, the, the clues of what maps are better than others? It's called logic. Okay. It's called logic. It was discovered by the best philosopher in history, Aristotle. I, I shouldn't say discovered, it was codified, explained. Uh, Aristotle is the father of logic and he's the opposite of Plato. Even though Aristotle was Plato's student for right. 20 years, right. he developed his own independent pro-reason uh -huh. philosophy. And that is the philosophy that took over in the Renaissance and led to where we are today, the philosophy of reason. Okay, but, 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 but logic that... proves that something, you, you want to take, take any of those philosophers, that, the catchphrases that you uh, quoted her on, yes. like take uh, Hume. Hume said, there is nothing we know. Well, do we know that? Mm -hmm. You can't answer yes, you can't answer no. It's a contradiction to say, let me tell you what I learned. I learned that I know nothing, mm -hmm. right? If you know nothing, then you're like a stone and you don't say anything. 
But then what happened? So I mean, that re I just refuted Hume. Yeah, okay? I, I, I understand that, but, but for what you are well, he explaining... He refuted himself, is what I'm saying. Right, right. Yeah. But, but for, for what you are explaining is like Aristotle got everything right with logic. Almost. Okay. But then humanity just ignored that, and yes. we have all these philosophers that go away from Aristotle's logic of designing a map that would be more coherent with reality. Yes, yes. Until... A thousand years later, it's rediscovered, and people chose to... See, people have free will. That's another issue in metaphysics, mm -hmm. the nature of reality and of man, the basic of basics. People don't have to face the truth. Mm -hmm. And that, apparently that's what happened with Aristotle. The first go around in ancient Greece, people just didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. But after centuries of darkness, when he was rediscovered in uh, around 1200, 1215, began to re-enter the West, people were excited. And they said, this is good stuff. Let, let's have some more of this. Let's figure it out. And then Thomas Aquinas synthesized yeah. Christianity with Aristotle, which was good and bad, you know, but he kind of made a compromise. But Aristotle won the compromise. And we, we had the scientific revolution and technology in the United States of America. But to, to get to your, to your point, uh, the map was, uh, uh, n doesn't have to be used. People don't have to use logic. They don't have to face things. You know Dostoevsky? Yeah. So what do I care that two plus two is four? I don't like it. Right. I don't care that people, you know, that it's supposed to be two and two is four. Or a wall is a wall is another. A wall is a wall. I don't like that. I'm not going to accept it. Yeah, I don't like gravity. I want to yeah. jump off a cliff and, exactly. and fly. Exactly. <laughs> But, but so understanding this and that there is, is a hierarchy, how are they, how, what, and the range of these questions that philosophy asks, how the, are they organized into the yeah. various branches? Well, like how, the, how do you construct that map? The basic of the basics is metaphysics, as I said. And from that, you, everything else builds on that. The next field of philosophy discusses how do you know? How do you prove something? Like logic. Mm -hmm. What is logic? How do we know? How do we decide among competing ideas? Exactly. Right? And that's called epistemology, the theory of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it discusses those questions and tries to define how man knows and when he can be certain of his knowledge. And that's like fundamental to all, all human endeavor, to mm -hmm. science and to art and to daily action. How do you decide what's true? There's a, there's a, you know, a branch of philosophy that discusses that. The next branch is, so what? So we've uh -huh. got... Because that so would be my what? next question. <laughs> yeah. Because if you decide that this is true, but someone else decides that the other thing yeah. is true, so what? So what? Uh -huh. And that's the branch of ethics, morality. Uh -huh. That's the branch of values. Uh -huh. What do you do about it? So this is... This is reality, and I know it by so-and-so means. Who cares? Well, you do, because in the objectivist philosophy, the objectivist ethics says the fundamental choice is to live or not to live. Mm -hmm. And your life is at stake in getting the right answer. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, should you um, eat diet A, a paleo diet, or should you eat the fat-free diet, or should you not care about diet? Right. Your life, your health depends upon that. How about, okay. sh should you vote for the Nazi party? Right, right, right. You right. know, your life depends on but that. But now that you mention those diets, or, or like Nazi ideas, or racist ideas, it seems to me that more than being certain that your philosophy is the correct philosophy, you should have an interest that is not only the correct philosophy, but the one that the market is pushing the most. Because even if you know that your philosophy is right, but you are surrounded by people who have primitive philosophies or the wrong philosophies, yeah. your life is going to be at stake. 
So it's not only having yeah, the right philosophy, it's about like in the market of ideas, yeah. the possibility of the right philosophy well, to be singing, more valuable. You're singing the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a philosopher who's not had much em employment or success in academia, some, but not much because my ideas are not marketable. Uh -huh. In the academic marketplace, they're marketable to people like you and to, I hope the viewers out there, but yeah. they go against everything that's being taught in the university. But, so. then, but then humanity is rational because we rather have more market for the terrible philosophies that lead us to misery and disaster like you already explained, whereas the good philosophies, the ones that are better, better maps, well, well, are the ones that, that get less uh, the, attraction. The market doesn't really come in here because it's, philosophy is um, simple in outline, but it's not simple to learn one that's different than you were brought up with. Mm -hmm. So it's not something, say you're thinking of buying the new uh, Tesla or Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. You know, you can spend, oh, an hour and go over the character, oh, it's got this horsepower and I do or don't like the way it looks and there's this competition, well, I think I want it or I think I don't want it. You can make that decision pretty easily. But now, what is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell you what the meaning of life is, but it's not going to be like telling you the cyber truck has 350 horsepower. It's not going to be something you can say, oh, well, that's an isolated fact, and I see he has a test to prove it. It's going to involve all your experience. You kind of have to integrate it with everything you know right. about life as such, everything you've concluded over your years. So you can't convert a person to a new philosophy quickly. And particularly if you're dealing with pro philosophy professionals who've spent their lives using a different philosophy teaching a different philosophy, forming their brain connections on the basis of this different philosophy, to then come in and give them a new one is a hard sell. It's right. not like a new car, you see. So it takes a long time. So when it's not a market thing. It's deeper than the market. The market comes out of a philosophy. Right. Right? So there's no, um, you know, you can't ask me to do things that will hurt me because everybody else thinks they'll help me. So I have a different philosophy. You know, I think that uh, voting socialist is going to hurt me. All the other intellectuals, not the common people, but the intellectuals in America all think, no, socialism is great. It's right. not going to hurt you. Uh, I can't jettison my mind and, and commit suicide by going along with them because it's marketable. Mm -hmm. I could have done that. I mean, I could have tried to do that. I could have tried to be popular rather than go by what I know, but then I wouldn't be me. I'd be, I've, I've sold myself out. So it's, the market doesn't really enter here. The market, this is so much deeper than the market. But so from all those branches that philosophy offers, and because you say it's... Uh, oh, we've it's only, there's a couple more. So mm -hmm. we got that. We got metaphysics. What is there? Mm -hmm. Epistemology. How do you know? Ethics. So what? Yeah. But then we get to politics and aesthetics, the two uh -huh. final branches. Uh -huh. So politics is, after you've defined right and wrong in ethics, good and evil in ethics, what is right and wrong about government? What is good and evil about man and the state? What is the proper way to organize political pro power to deal with people, right? And that's politics. And it's a good example of what you mentioned earlier, hierarchy, because politics comes from ethics. Right. You can't say what ought to be like, should people be unequal in their income or not? That's an ethical question. You can't just say, well, let's vote on it. I mean, it's, it's only political because it comes out of a theory of the good. A wrong theory of good, but a theory, a misunderstanding of ethics leads to egalitarianism 
in politics. Uh, now, art is the dramatization of values, mm -hmm. of ethical, moral values in the various art forms, like in literature, in sculpture, in uh, music even, in painting. It's the pre presentation of an ideal. So it depends upon ethics. And it also directly ties into metaphysics in a way we'll talk about in a later yeah. episode. So it comes from metaphysics to epistemology right. to then ethics to then politics and then and aesthetics, art. Aesthetics, yes. Which are kind of like to both come out of ethics as equal. So if you want to find the right map or the right philosophy, mm -hmm. That is the order that you should establish. Whereas most people, I, I work all over Latin America, mm -hmm. they they start with politics or, yes. or they start yeah. with art. Sorry to start there, Assuming, but you got to get deeper. Exactly, you got to get deeper in, in all those branches and go then back to the things that you have to question. Yeah, and yourself. I can show you that, you know, how, how quick that is. Like, uh, should there be universal medical? I would say, no, there should not because it's a violation of property rights. It's a violation of individual rights. Right. And they would say, what are you talking about individual rights? Exactly. What, you, what, what is that? And I say, well, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right, which is in the Declaration. And, and they would say, but those old fashioned ideas aren't true anymore. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I would say to them, then we'd be in metaphysics. So you mean truth changes with, with time? Uh, what was true in the 1900s isn't true today? And they would say, yeah. And, and then I would say to them, well, does that become false tomorrow? Exactly. That theory of yours about truth being relative to time, is that relative to time? And what, why on earth would you think that it's relative to time? It isn't relative to time. So it would be arguing metaphysics right away. And, and they might say to me, well, you can't prove that. And I would say, yes, I can. But you have to have a rational concept of proof, and here's mine. And that's epistemology. Right. So you quickly, when you argue about universal you know, medical care or uh, any topic uh, you could get me on Brexit, you know, for England. It could be any topic. You very quickly go back to the fundamentals. To the fundamentals. That's where the disagreements are. Right. The disagreements are not about the concretes. The disagreements are about different moral philosophies, different views of the universe. Mm -hmm. They produce the different uh, political positions. Well, Harry, thank you very much for clarifying to us that it's not only about having a philosophy, but also uh, looking for the right kind of philosophy to really question ourselves if we are living a life uh, by the principles we've chosen or if we're just living a life after the principles that others have chosen for us. Oh, that is so true and it's especially true in ethics. We have an episode coming up yes. which shows how people have adopted the wrong ethical standards and that wrecks their lives. That the, causes so much unhappiness and misery, the wrong standard of right and wrong. Thank you very much. And to everyone watching, if you're interested in understanding if the philosophy that you've been living your life with uh, is something that you have chosen consciously or it was something just granted to you, I really recommend that you look for this book, Philosophy, Who Needs It? There's also great courses and essays on the Ayn Rand Institute website online that you can follow. And then question yourself, what kind of philosophy have you been living your life with? And is it the right one? Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned and subscribe to the channel of the Ayn Rand Institute if you want more on this subject.